So we think we are recording. All right, uh, and so there's uh, there's the review sheet. And if you look at the review sheet, it's going down to Iran Contra. So we'll go ahead and get rid of all that. All right, uh, and all of anything else. Gosh, right. why is that happening? Right. One more. Okay. Almost there. I apologize. Okay, so then we go about up to the top, and I believe maybe, uh, so we're looking at Cold War stuff. All right, uh, and, uh, oh, goodness, here it is. All right, so we're starting right there. So we're looking at the beginning of the Cold War. All right, um, and let's make sure that that's the right thing. Do we have? All right, yep. Okay. All right, so we're going to come to Cold War. All right, and so we've got uh, Cold War going on. All right, so the first thing I think... Uh, was cause of the Cold War. So we're just going to kind of look briefly uh, at that slide. And remember, one of the causes of the Cold War is the Yalta Conference. And so if you remember, Roosevelt at Yalta doesn't have very long to live. And so he doesn't really stand up to the Soviets. Uh, and the Soviets promised they'd set Eastern Europe free, but then they don't do it. Right? And so uh, Roosevelt dies shortly after that. All right, so then you're just kind of looking at the differences between, so cause number one is that Yalta Conference. Cause number two, hey, the countries are opposite of each other. They're almost destined uh, to fight. So we believe in freedom. They believe in equality. They're communists. We elect our leaders. They've got a dictator. We've got a capitalist economy where you choose what you're going to do for a living and you can get rich. They've got a communist economy where the government tells you what you're going to do and you can't. Uh, both sides were expansionists, wanted the rest of the world to kind of be like them. Uh, and both sides were mad about World War II. We were mad. Uh, we were upset because we felt like we couldn't appease a dictator again. And Stalin's acting like Hitler. He's taking over uh, countries and we can feel like we got to stand up to him. And Stalin's mad because D-Day took so long. Remember, 20 million Soviets died uh, in World War II while he's waiting on that second front. All right, uh, so you've got what? Yalta, the Yalta Conference. You've got the inherent tensions between the two places, and then you've got like World War II events going here uh, that are all kind of causes of the Cold War. All right, now it's just kind of stuff about the Cold War there. Um, let's check and see. Let's go back to the review sheet and see if you get UN stuff on there. Doesn't look like it. All right, so let's go back uh, to... Uh, the PowerPoint. Let's get rid of these things so I'll go back quicker when I start going back. Uh, that one right there. All right. Uh, so let's move on past like the UN stuff. And so we're looking at uh, like Cold War events. So remember the Nazis who were part of the Holocaust, some of them got uh, convicted and hung as a result of uh, the Nuremberg trials. And so here we got events going. So event number one of the Cold War is really Berlin. So remember we remember that uh, Berlin was inside of eastern Germany, the eastern part of Germany, and it was split east and west. And so the free people were in the western part of Berlin. Uh, and so what Stalin's doing is he's uh, putting a blockade and not letting in basically food by train or by truck. Uh, and so Truman stands up to him and he flies the supplies in. Remember, he's flying them in real low so you can drop the food down on the people. So at any point during this over a year uh, airlift, you know, the communists could have shot the planes down, but that would have been World War III. All right, so eventually uh, Stalin backs down, so that brings this crisis, uh, the Berlin crisis to an end, and he stops the blockade. All right, but Churchill at this point says, hey, Europe, you know, Europe's divided. There's an iron current curtain that's come down over Europe. And remember now, we know that this is not the Berlin Wall. That's not something that comes to the Kennedy years. But so it's an imaginary curtain, and everything on the east part of it's communist, to the west of it are, you know, the countries that are kind of hanging on and are still democracies. Okay, uh, so the Cold War policy. Uh, let's do this slide, then we'll check back with the review sheet and see how we're matching up. Uh, the Cold War policy is containment. 
Uh, and Kennan was a diplomat who had hung out the Soviet Union said, what you got to do is you got to stand up to the Soviets. They don't want another big war, so if you stand up to them, they'll stop. But if you let them, they're going to take over more and more countries. Two specific policies that were part of containment, the Truman Doctrine, where we're sending $400 million worth of military aid to Greece and Turkey, which are down here in southeastern Europe, uh, to prevent the communists from taking over. And then the really successful one, the Marshall Plan, uh, which is like right up there with the GI Bill and the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, for successful historic government policies that sent $14 billion of reconstruction money to Western Europe to help it rebuild uh, after the Cold War. All right, let's check the re review sheet, see how we're doing. All right, Marshall Plan, Truman Doctrine, Containment. All right, so next thing, next thing uh, is China, Asia stuff going on, all right, which is the same PowerPoint. All right, so we'll work our way down. So there's Asia. All right, so you've got um, kind of the Asian version, the Japanese version of the Nuremberg Trials. There's Japanese war criminals that are hung. Um, Japan, Japan has a new constitution. They're not allowed to have a military, so uh, we didn't want to have to worry about Japan attacking again. MacArthur kind of writes this new constitution in Japan because it doesn't have to invest in the military uh, has a strong economy pretty quickly. All right, so then you got China. China has a civil war, and Mao, we remember him as the guy who doesn't take a bath. Nixon in a little while is going to come visit him. Uh, he wins the civil war, but this is important. Why? Because, hey, 40% of the world's population is communist, so we're, we're really freaking out about the spread of communism. All right, uh, you got an arms race going. Uh, the arms race is really the key to Reagan's success, so they, Soviets, Dropped an atomic bomb in 1949, and so then you've got uh, dropping of the hydrogen bomb by the United States in 52, uh, by the Soviets in 53, in spite of the fact that our scientists who developed uh, the atomic bomb were against uh, the dropping of these things, but they're catching up to us, all right? And so that's kind of freaking us out, okay? All right, um, and so there's Nixon. So we know Nixon pretty well now. So this is the first time we see Nixon. So remember now... When he goes to China, he can do that because he's this tough anti-communist guy. He's like the first version of McCarthy, and he's accusing people of being communists. Also, you had the Rosenbergs here who sold nuclear secrets to uh, the Soviets and were the only like husband and wife ever uh, executed in American history. All right, so there's the Korean War. All right, we'll do uh, fight the Korean War. We'll go back and we'll check back on the review sheet. Let me see what the next slide is. All right, I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to fight the Korean War, look at the review slide for a second, take a breath, then we'll go back to uh, the review sheet. So remember, it's a pretty simple little war, all right, like Vietnam, but simpler. So the northern communists attack, uh, and they almost take over the whole country. But dun 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 dun, -dun. here comes the United States, led by MacArthur, uh, and they push the North Koreans all, all the way almost to the border of China. So then China crosses the Yalu River and pushes everybody right back to the 38th parallel where everything started, uh, and the war basically ends in a stalemate. Truman has to fire MacArthur because, remember, MacArthur wanted to drop an atomic bomb on China. Uh, and so it's a tie, so containment kind of works, but we didn't win, and Truman, really kind of an unpopular president because he's seen as weak on communism, China became communist, and he didn't win uh, the Korean War. All right. Let's look at that for a second. You can kind of review things for a second. I'm breathing. All right, and we go back to uh, the review sheet. So it looks like, ooh, looks like a couple of things here. So I believe I'm going to stick with the review sheet on this because I think i got to kind of go back and forth on the PowerPoint. So McCarthyism. Remember, McCarthy is the bigger, better, more improved version of Nixon. So he's in the Senate. And everybody's going to really freak out because he accused lots of people of being communists. You know, he doesn't really have any evidence, uh, but you can't pull up, prove a negative. You can't prove you're not a communist. He's famous for that question, are you now or have you ever been a communist? Remember, it was a witch hunt. The Crucible was kind of written about Salem, but the playwright Arthur Miller had McCarthyism on his mind. Neither Truman nor Eisenhower would stand up to McCarthy when he's accusing all these people. But like in The Crucible, like in Salem, McCarthy kind of gets carried away and accuses uh, members of the army and even Marshall of having communist connections. So when he accuses the wrong people, you know, he kind of loses reputation. 
All right, uh, kind of coming back home now, getting to the 50s. So the GI Bill uh, is paying for returning World War II soldiers uh, to go to college or to get home loans or business loans. Uh, it's really, really successful, and it contributes uh, to that economic boom coming out of World War II. All right, uh, the suburbs... I wonder if I can type that. Yep, the suburbs uh, are being created. Leventown's the first one. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of mass production of housing, and people can buy cheap houses. Uh, remember, it's segregated cheap housing. The Levis didn't sell to African Americans. Uh, and the interstates facilitate folks driving uh, to the suburbs uh, where their houses are and back into their uh, jobs in the cities, and it's created for these military reasons during the Cold War to get the military from coast to coast. All right, um, the economic boom. Let's see if we can find that slide. I think we can. It's going to spell out, whoops, that's the wrong PowerPoint. I think it's this one. And it's going to spell out more, I believe. And it's going to be, mil there it is. All right, so hey, there's the suburbs. There's the Levittown stuff. And, you know, you got this big economic boom going in the 50s. All right, so there's the more. So we're spending a lot of money on the military. The Cold War's going on after the war. Uh, this is before the creation of OPEC, so we're getting cheap oil from the Middle East. Uh, all that productivity coming out of World War II is rising, and then every, the kids are going to school. Well, well-educated workers are productive workers. All right, um, and then I think we're kind of working our way into like that cultural stuff in the 50s. So let's go over here. Is this it? Yep. Uh, and then let's check the review sheet to see what we got. All right, so we're looking at like, uh, you know, kind of rebellious stuff going. So if we go down, so there it is. All right, so Elvis we know is kind of the forerunner of the civil rights movement. Uh, he's a really interesting guy. You know, he's not politically minded, but he's singing blues, which is really what rock and roll is. Uh, and he's controversial for a lot of reasons because he's dancing and because uh, uh, he's kind of integrating music in a way. All right, you got all these controversial folks, Playboy magazine, these folks who say, and they're kind of like, uh, um, what, the lost generation in the 20s, and they're saying there's too much conformity going on uh, in the 50s. All right, let's check the review sheet to see what, where we need to go next. All right, uh, so then we're kind of getting into... What civil rights stuff? All right, so Jackie Robinson, uh, we know he's the guy who integrated Major League Baseball. Uh, Branch Rickey uh, signed him, but he had to he had to promise not to say anything bad when people talked uh, about him. Emmett Till uh, is an African American kid who goes down into uh, Mississippi from Chicago, and he ends up getting killed because he said something to the white lady and whistled at the white lady. All right, and then you're kind of looking at 50 civil rights stuff. All right, uh, so let's see if it kind of comes up. All right, there's I Like I. So there's the Civil Rights Act, uh, Civil Rights stuff. So there's Jackie Robinson. Uh, Let's come to the front office, you're leaving. We need Miss Rebecca Davis's class to go to the steam room. Rebecca Davis's class and Jared Lewis. Aaliyah Brawls, come to the front office, please. Aaliyah Brawls and Jared Lewis. All right, so there's Brown versus Board of Education. So remember, the ruling in Brown versus Board of Education are the schools are supposed to desegregate. That doesn't really mean integrate. Integrate is when the busing happens in the 70s. Desegregate just kind of means you're not going to prevent anyone from going to your school, but you're supposed to do it fast. So remember, it didn't really happen fast. Now, I'll go back up on the PowerPoint. The I like Ike stuff uh, is there. So remember, Ike... Uh, kind of like Nixon, kind of like Clinton's going to be when we get there, is this nonpartisan centrist Republican who's getting elected uh, when, uh, when Democrats are winning elections. And we remember the very sad thing that, you know, Eisenhower's got the reputation of being a, uh, a nice person, but he calls that poor man an egghead, and that makes us very depressed and sad. All right, uh, so there's the civil rights stuff. Let me check with the review sheet. All right, ooh, so we got Kennedy next. All right, so that's going to be a few down. All right, so remember, Kennedy gets elected because he looks good on TV. He looks better than Nixon does. Um, you know, Nixon sweated on TV, uh, and so the people who watched on TV said Kennedy um, won the debate. All right, and then right away, Kennedy, 
uh, is seen as weak by the Soviets. So they build the Berlin Wall. He doesn't do anything. So then he tries to invade Cuba, and it's a big disaster. He's got those Cuban exiles uh, who go in there, and they all get killed or captured. So uh, the Soviet society is a big wimp, and they put those missiles in Cuba in the last 13 days, closest we ever came to nuclear war and... If Kennedy had listened to the military when they're telling him to bomb Cuba, invade Cuba, you got nuclear war. But remember, he blockaded or quarantined Cuba, let that one passenger ship through, and then they made a deal uh, to end the crisis that if the Soviets get the missiles out of Cuba, we leave Castro alone. And Castro stayed in there. You know, the Castro family is still to this day in charge of uh, Cuba. All right, so then you're getting into 60s civil rights stuff. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, see what we got. All right, um, so sit-ins and freedom rides. Uh, 1960 is going to be the sit-ins where, you know, they sit in at the lunch counter and the people fuss at them and so forth. The freedom rides is when they're taking the interstate buses. Uh, let's see. So there's there's the debate on TV. All right. Uh, and there's like Kennedy stuff. All right. Uh, and so there's the Cuba stuff. You know, the, the Bay of Pigs and the Missile Crisis. All right. There's that one of those boats that got stopped by the American ships. All right. So there's civil, uh, civil rights. So there's the Freedom Rides. All right. Uh, remember, and that's John Lewis and... They're coming south on the interstate buses, and the Klan stops the bus and blows up the bus and uh, beats up the people on the bus. When they come into the bus station, the police give the Klan 15 minutes to beat up the protesters, and that blotchy stuff on Lewis uh, is blood after he got beat up. All right, uh, Birmingham is next, 1963, so we watched the film. Uh, King writes a letter from a Birmingham jail saying, hey, He'd rather deal with the Klan than moderate white preachers who won't do what they know is the right thing. Uh, but he can't get moderate African-American adults to march with him in Birmingham because they don't want to lose their job. So you have the Children's March, and remember on day two of the Children's March, you got the fire hoses and the German shepherds, and uh, Kennedy's embarrassed when he sees it on TV and he knows everybody's watching, so he proposes the Civil Rights Act. So the I Have a Dream speech is when... Anyone interested in becoming a high school cheerleader, please report to Ms. Lester's room at this time. Thank you. Uh, March on Washington is to support the Civil Rights Act. They, we remember kind of gentle legislator Kennedy can't get passed. So that's where he makes the I Have a Dream speech. And remember some of it said, in addition, I have a dream, you know, 100 years later. So it's been 100 years since the Emancipation Proclamation uh, and Declaration of Independence Constitution. Uh, they're like a bad check. You know, they're a broken promise that people are going to have equal rights. All right, and I Have a Dream was ad-libbed at the end. All right, so uh, there's Dallas. We remember he's getting uh, shot by Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald. We watched a rather uh, troubling video of it, and you've got the different conspiracy theories, but he was down in Dallas. Johnson wanted him to come down there, and the Warren Commission, led by Chief Justice Earl Warren, said concluded that Oswald acted alone. So we had uh, some kind of interesting discussions of conspiracies, but conspiracy doesn't really make the test. Uh, all that much, so let's see what we got. All right, so we're skipping the uh, assassination and continuing with civil rights there. All right, oh, sorry, wrong one. There it is. All right, uh, so there's Johnson. So remember, he's using the treatment. There's Richard Russell. The Senate today, the office building in the Senate, I didn't tell you all this, is the Richard Russell off Senate office building, named after this Georgia senator that Johnson's pushing uh, to pass the Civil Rights Act. All right, and so the Civil Rights Act ends uh, segregation, ends Jim Crow laws. Um, Johnson gets reelected after that Daisy Girl ad where he says his opponent's going to start a nuclear war. We remember all those uh, fun stories about him. All right, he's got, let's see, he's got the, the Great Society. Let's go down to the bottom of that. There's a march in Selma for the right to vote. John Lewis leads it. And you got protesters getting beat up on TV again. So then Johnson makes the We Shall Overcome speech and proposes the Voting Rights Act uh, of 1965, kind of completing 
the civil rights movement, the successful part of the civil rights movement. All right, also part of Johnson, you know, his version of the New Deal is the Great Society. It's MIV, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, health care for seniors and for poor people, education and Head Start. Uh, so he's going to spend more money to close the achievement gap, uh, ending the immigration quotas, and of course, voting rights. All right, let's go up to the review sheet, see what we got. So there's Selma, voting rights. All right, then you're making your way to Vietnam. All right, well, militant civil rights. All right, so the militant civil rights leaders, we know that. That's Malcolm X, also the Black Panthers, that guy Stokely Carmichael and Huey Newton, uh, who say they believe in black pa uh, power uh, and that nonviolence is really just kind of naive and it's not going to work. All right, so that gets us to Vietnam. All right, so let's find Vietnam on the PowerPoint. All right, and tell that story. So there's the black power, folks. All right, Malcolm X, of course. All right, uh, so there it is. All right, throughout its history, it's been invaded. You got that legend that that lady was pregnant, and she delivered the baby, got up and kept right on fighting. And, you know, they the United States coming to Vietnam was nothing new. So they called the war against the French when the French took over the War of the Flea, and Ho Chi Minh's the guy that fought off the French, and he's going to fight off uh, the Americans as well. And he said, if you kill ten times as many Amer French as we kill, as you kill Vietnamese, we're still going to win, and that was kind of the attitude towards the United States. All right, Kennedy uh, sent advisors over there. He encouraged the coup, so we don't know what would have happened if Kennedy had survived because uh, Johnson becomes president. But Johnson and Kennedy... And Eisenhower and, you know, all believed in the domino theory that you can't let communism spread in that part of the world. Um, and Johnson's dilemmas are, if he doesn't do anything, well, communism spreads. If he attacks the North like what Truman did in Korea, you get an atomic, uh, you, you get a nuclear war because China has atomic bombs now. So the thing that gets us in is this thing, the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. So remember what's happening. If you look at my little cursor there. So you got American boats off the coast of North Vietnam. And maybe they got fired at. The first one probably got fired at because it was aiding uh, cross-border raids by the ARVN. Uh, the second one may have gotten fired at. But Johnson claims, McNamara, his Secretary of Defense claims, we were just minding our own business on a routine patrol and they attacked us. So we got to fight back. So that's his excuse for sending soldiers in there. All right, so we remember the problems. You can't see the enemy because of the jungle. You can't tell who the enemy after actually is when you see Vietnamese people because they may be Arvin, they may be VC. All right, so what do you do about the solution? You spray the Agent Orange on the jungle, uh, and sometimes you kill civilians. So the Malai Massacre uh, is the most famous case of that. Johnson swears up and down that we're winning for the longest time because we're killing more people than they're killing of ours. But this big invasion on a big holiday, the Tet Offensive, proves that they're not ready to quit, and that's really the turning point of the war, and it really uh, ruins Johnson. And so he doesn't run uh, in 1968. There he is announcing that he's not going to run, and he dies of heart failure before the war's over. All right, uh, let me take a breath. Let's check the review sheet. All right, uh, so there's Ted Offensive right there. All right, so we'll go into kind of the Nixon years uh, in Vietnam. All right, so people are protesting the war. Uh, and the election of 1968, you got that big police riot. Uh, and that's kind of evidence of the generation gap. All right, and the gap between the hawks and the doves, and the protesters are throwing pee and poop and hitting the police, and so the police just kind of uh, beat them up real bad, and the result is kind of a realignment that America kind of becomes a Republican country in 1968 the way they'd become a Democratic country in 1932. All right. Um, so there it is. So there's the generation gap. You know, the parents and the kids don't understand each other. You know, the kids uh, reject traditional values and the parents believe in traditional values. The parents are more religious. The kids are more educated. Uh, you've got radical war protesters blowing up bomb-making factories but killing janitors. Uh, so, you know, the counterculture is really challenging everything about the America of the 1950s and really even the Kennedy years in the 1960s. All right, so Nixon's going to get us out. So he slowly pulls the troops out. That's called Vietnamization. 
Uh, the troops get real frustrated. Nixon claims that his silent majority supports the war, and you had a uh, one more big protest where college kids are getting killed by at Kent State when he bombs Cambodia, which was a neutral country that the Ho Chi Minh Trail uh, went through. All right. Let's go down, and then we're into, like, economics. Let's check the review sheet. Uh, Nixon's a law and order guy. So you're getting into the Nixon stuff is what you're getting. So that's like code words, right? Euphemisms. Vote for me, and I'll cut down on this black crime in the city. Vote for me, I'll be against uh, force busing to integrate schools. All right, so that's kind of his domestic stuff. Uh, but his real achievement, so that's kind of the way he handles politics. But his achievements as president is in the area of foreign policy. Uh, so, let's see. There's the reason. There's the stagflation. You've got a stagnant economy, and you've got uh, inflation going at the same time. All right, so there he is, triangular diplomacy. Uh, he's going to China, hanging out with Mao, making the Soviets nervous. So they invite him to Moscow, and he signs the SALT Treaty that the Senate did ratify. Remember, the Senate's not going to ratify Jimmy Carter's SALT II tra Treaty. All right, uh, but he's able to turn down the tension in the Cold War, and that's called detente. All right, so in spite of the fact that we know he's going to have to resign, really kind of a foreign policy genius. Uh, and so when the tension in the Cold War is eased, he can kind of pull the troops gradually out of Vietnam. So the last troops uh, come out in 73. Saigon falls in 75, but that, and that's embarrassing, but by that point, Nixon wasn't the president anymore. Watergate had already happened. All right. Uh, domestic policy. Let's take a look at the review sheet. Um, they taunt salt. All right. Uh, so you got stagflation there. You know, that was on uh, the slide. What? The new workers are not very productive, so that's a stagnant economy. And what? You know, the inflation because of the oil prices, also because Johnson's spending so much money on the Vietnam War. All right. So then you got those court cases. Why don't I do this? Hit the then it all is up there on the top. So we're going from Engel versus Vitality to Roe versus Wade. All right, so Engel versus I think I'm going to stay with the review sheet uh, on this one. Engel versus Vitality is the one about school prayer that outlaws school prayer. Gideon versus Wainwright, that guy gets the right to a lawyer. Remember, he had uh, been accused of robbing a pool hall uh, and he didn't know what to do representing himself. So the Supreme Court said, hey, you should have had a lawyer. And it turns out the guy that was the witness against him was actually the, the guy who uh, stole from the pool hall. All right, don't worry about New York, New York Times versus Sullivan. I got rid of that one on the PowerPoint. There's a lot of court cases there. All right, next two are pretty big time. Griswold, remember we kind of got uh, fooled into halfway supporting abortion because Griswold versus Connecticut says you have the right to privacy to use birth control. So everybody was in favor of that. But in Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court said, hey, what's growing inside a woman's body is her own private business. So the right to abortion, 1973, uh, is based on the right to privacy. Okay, so we saw a slide on this stuff. Let's not worry about new federalism. I'm getting rid of that one too. All right, so the slide on this is kind of his domestic stuff. So that, you know, Kent State was where the big protest was when he bombed the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Cambodia. And George Wallace had been the segregationist governor uh, of Birmingham, of Alabama uh, when Birmingham was going on, and he ran for president in 1968 and won uh, five southern states. So costing the Democrats the election of 68 uh, and allowing Nixon to get elected president. All right, so Watergate. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, um, so Nixon's just, you know, kind of deceptively liberal. The government's spending more money. So Reagan is going to try to cut government spending, but Nixon doesn't do that. You know, he ends up being acting kind of like a uh, Democrat in that respect. All right, so there's a Southern strategy, kind of using those euphemisms to get elected president. All right, and here comes Watergate. All right, so there's Watergate. You remember it's a hotel. Uh, and, you know, guys for uh, Nixon break in, uh, and they cl he claims he doesn't have anything to do with it, but the Supreme Court makes him turn over the tapes. 
Uh, and it turns out he's involved in a cover-up, even if he wasn't uh, involved in the planning of it. So he has to resign. It was clear that his own party was going to turn against him, uh, and Ford pardoned him, which was controversial. And so Carter's able to say, hey, vote for me. I'm much more honest than this crook Nixon and this guy Ford who pardoned uh, the crook. All right, let's check the review sheet. Makes some pretty good headway there. All right, so then you're going to get into the social movements. All right, social movements uh, of the 1970s. So women's liberation. I'm going to go quick because, I don't know, I'm feeling like the time's uh, passing on us a little bit. Let me check my time there. All right, uh, so now is the National Organization of Women. Uh, Betty Friedan was the leader of that. All right, the women's liberation movement was uh, led by a prettier lady. Remember, she was using sex appeal. This was the, the 70s was the decade of the sexual revolution and the divorce rates going up. Uh, so her name was Gloria Steinem. All right, the ladies were successful <coughs> uh, with Title IX, which spent a lot more money on women's education and sports. Uh, and ironically, we counted nine girls sports programs here in Calhoun and we also said hey it's the top five girls last year graduating so uh, young ladies are doing much better in education today there's kind of a guys crisis in education and that kind of comes as a result of women's success in title IX. we also remember the ERA didn't quite pass uh, that was the equal rights amendment uh, southern states didn't go along with it so that was the thing that ladies didn't successfully get passed all right, there's that, um, the EPA, that's the Nixon liberal stuff. All right, so that lady wrote the book Silent Spring, which said if we don't quit polluting the environment, we're going to poison all the birds and they're not going to be singing one of these springs. Uh, and he also created the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, and you saw the slide there where it said that Ford pardoned him. All right, let's go over here and find our Carter stuff. So that is the today's stuff, the last day uh, worth of stuff right there, the Carter and Reagan stuff. All right, hey, there's the the lady stuff. Remember that, uh, what was her name? Chastain, Brandy Chastain was her name. And she scores that winning goal, and the women won the World Cup, uh, and the Manhattan, and so it was all about the success of women's sports and women's education. All right, there's that thing showing the divorce rate. Uh, and, you know, people are kind of, kind of getting frustrated with all the different social movements of the late 1970s and early, late 1960s, early 1970s. Uh, and so that's the context in which Carter gets elected. So he says he's not going to lie. He's honest. He's religious. Uh, but this honest religious Sunday school teacher is also a little bit weak. Uh, he's going to be the good guy president. He's only going to give aid. Uh, give American money to other countries that respect human rights. So he's really, really idealistic. Uh, and maybe it doesn't quite work. Sounds great, may not quite work out for him. Uh, you know, people think that he thinks he's better than them. I told the story of uh, kind of feeling like he did think he was better than me when I met him uh, with the Sunday school class. His own party didn't support him. They wouldn't pass his laws. They wouldn't ratify SALT II. But his greatest success was the Camp David Accords where he makes peace using his religious background to speak to uh, the leader of Egypt and Israel. And those two countries are still at peace today. Okay, so then you got the hostage crisis. Uh, we had supported the Shah. Uh, he was a dictator. You know, kind of the X statement on Carter's human rights policy. He gets overthrown. He comes to the United States. Iran gets mad and takes those hostages, and Carter just can't get them out. They're there for over a year, and he never does get them out, even when he tries to rescue them. It's this miserable failure. All right, the Soviets invade and kind of get stuck in Afghanistan, and he's sending money to the Mujahideen, including Osama bin Laden. Uh, but he also refuses to send athletes to the Olympics, and, you know, the athletes are frustrated, and Americans just don't feel good about the United States uh, when Carter's president. All right, and so boom, here comes Reagan. All right, let's check the review sheet, see what it says. All right, uh, so there's Afghanistan, there's the Olympics, and there's the Reagan stuff. All right, so Reagan's an outsider too, just like Carter. Uh, he's a Hollywood actor, and he's just really, really optimistic. Optimistic and patriotic. 
uh, and tough. And so those pictures of him are kind of the key. All right, uh, and hey, Democrats voted for him in the South. Eventually, those Southern Democrats become Republicans. Uh, Christians vote for him based on his opposition to abortion specifically and kind of hippies and the counterculture. Generally, he'd been the governor of California and kind of taking on the Black Panthers uh, and the hippie protesters there in California. And he also is saying, hey, the big threat to... Uh, the common man is no longer big business like in the Gilded Age, but big government. So he had been a former Democrat. All right. Uh, the hostages, you know, he gets elected president, boom, the hostages come home. He's got that famous quote, you know, in this context, government's kind of out of control, so we need to spend less money. Uh, he shows lots of grace and humor and courage uh, when he shot, remember he said, hey, I hope you're all Republicans to the doctors that were uh, uh, operate on, operating on him. Uh, and so regardless of what people thought of his policies, he was always really personally popular. All right, so those policies are he's going to cut taxes, supply-side economics, spend more money on the military, less money on poverty. So the result is, hey, you got a big economic boom, uh, but you also got inequality. The inner cities are in bad shape. You got the Crips and the Bloods and the gang wars of the 1980s. But you got a lot of people making a lot of money in the yuppies and the BMW are kind of the symbol of wealth there in the 1980s. So Reaganomics leads to a pretty successful economy. All right, but his crowning achievement... Uh, it's going to be ending the Cold War. So he says, hey, they're evil. We're not going to do detente. Not going to make nice with these evil people. And it's been a lot of money on the military, especially this big zapper in the sky, SDI. And my goodness, you know, the students today were just so stressed out and horrified, uh, concerned that, you know, the evil empire was going to launch nuclear weapons. But thank goodness the zapper in the sky zapped them all out of there. However, it didn't work. All right, So the critics called it Star Wars and they said there's no way you can knock all those missiles out of the sky and it's going to cost too much money. But it makes Gorbachev nervous. He can't afford to keep up with uh, the arms race spending. So he goes and makes nice with Reagan and they signed this thing, the INF Treaty. Oh, it's ended intermediate nuclear weapons and effectively ended the Cold War. All right, and then you've got some uh, you've got some scandals, but they don't really stick. So he sends Marines into Lebanon, two hundred get killed. He pulls them out, but he's not any less popular. So then you got this Iran Contra scandal, and we're not going to do the long version of it. He's trading Oliver North is trading arms for hostages and sending some of the money to the Contras who are fighting against the communists. Sandinistas in Nicaragua, and he didn't have Congress's permission to do it. Uh, and so it was a big scandal. Uh, and this guy North, who was the mastermind, said Reagan knew, but people don't really seem to care that Reagan knew. Uh, and so it didn't bring down the Reagan presidency. The conservatives were hoping he was going to end abortion, but he didn't. Um, he just kind of made it a little bit harder to get an abortion as a result of these court cases. And I believe that's it, right? Yep, all right, so Bush is next. All right, at this point comes the most important part of our program where people tell me, remind me what I do next. All right, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, am I going to hit this thing? Yeah, you have to end it. So I hit it, right? Yeah.